Be kind to your partner and learn to reestablish those emotional bonds with them. That is the wisdom of today's reading. Greetings, everyone. I am Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on today's episode of the High Priestess's Circle. Please consult the appropriate professionals in regards to readings that involve health, legal, and finance issues. Obleron is a mystic, not a doctor, lawyer, or accountant. Thank you. Today on the High Priestess's Circle, we're going to be doing an elemental synastry reading. It's a technique that I developed which combines the tarot, astrology, and the five elements. Alright, so we're going to start out with... The element of spirit, which is represented by the bell. The bell creates sound, and the sound was the word of God. It was the movement that set the whole cosmos in motion. Now, the element of spirit is divinity. It's the divine. So, it has not quite manifested yet, but it is just beyond the realm of our existence. So what's happening in the realm of the divine? What does it have for us? Again, the the whole reading is going to be based off of the spirit. And as we go through the different elements, you're going to find that it all relates back to the element of spirit. Ace of Cups. All right. So spirit is being influenced by the Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups is is representing the emotions, the emotions which have not manifested yet. The Ace of Cups is also representative of water. And again, like I said, Aces are it is energy which has not manifested yet. So we have a lot of this emotional energy. We have and, and emotion can also be interpreted as intuition as well. We have a lot of emotional energy which has not manifested itself yet, which makes sense because it's in the realm of the spirit still. But it wants to come to fruition. It wants to, to manifest in the material world. So what do the astrology die have to say for us? What is the advice? Okay. Pluto in Libra in the 8th house. All right. 8th house is Scorpio. And, wow, this is very interesting. Okay. Let's re-roll for the Deccan. I roll this this dice twice. Once for the house and the second time for the Deccan. Seven. Okay, so we're in the middle Deccan of Libra, which is the Lord of Sorrow, Governed by Saturn. Okay. Give me a moment to interpret this really quick. So we have... We have essentially Pluto, which is coming to town. And it is saying... It's saying, okay, there needs to be a death or a transformation in regards to... Libra, which is our interpersonal relationships. Generally, Libra refers to arrangements or marriages. It refers to our significant others. It can also refer to people that we view as equal footing on ourselves. So certain certain people that, that we consider peers, but it's more than just an acquaintance level. It's also It's also an interpersonal level with the people that we may work with or that we may talk with. Okay, so the emotional energy is being guided by Pluto. And again, Pluto also rules Scorpio, which is the eighth house that we're in. So we're we're, we're looking at a lot of transformative energy regarding our interpersonal relationships. Um, And also... Because Scorpio represents things like death, inheritance. It also represents, let's say, sex. So this could also... I mean, this this is probably more representing the, 
the significant others in our life. And again, we need to have an emotional transformation, or I should say an emotional transformation is coming to us from spirit regarding our interpersonal relationships. Okay. Yeah. And because the middle decan of Libra is influenced by Saturn, it's suggesting that the transformation has to come by restructuring and reorganizing our relationship to our significant other. So that's, that's how we reestablish our emotional connection with them. Okay, yeah. So that's what's happening in the spirit world. Let's see. Let's go next to the element of fire. Now, fire is, is essentially the spirit coming down and beginning to manifest from the spirit world. It's not quite material yet, but it is the beginning steps of, of it coming down. It is our inspiration. It is our spirit. It's, it, it could be representing the human spirit as well. Um, fire is also our willpower. Fire, like, as the name suggests, you know, do you have, do you have the burning desire to live? This is all represented by the element of fire. And fire is also represented by the wands because it is directed willpower. It is intentional use of our spirit and our energies. So what is fire? Well, what, what does it have to suggest? Okay. Fire. Oh, okay. The Page of Swords in reverse. Now, the Page of Swords in reverse... Hmm. The Page of Swords in reverse usually means that there was probably some type of person, some type of gossip, or some type of, let's say, intellectually immature person who came and influenced this relationship. Or it could be one of the people in this relationship, in this interpersonal relationship. And the Page of Swords, essentially what, what it did was it clouded our judgment. It clouded our drive and our spirit. And basically miscommunicated. It either told lies, it, it intentionally set us apart, it intentionally thwarted us through communicative and intellectual endeavors. Okay, so that's what fire is being influenced by. Now, what what do the astrology die have to say? Okay. So we have Mercury in Gemini in the eighth house. Oh, wow. Okay. A lot of air energy here, which is influencing fire. Okay. So, Mercury and Gemini in the 8th house. Again, we are back in the house of Scorpio. What is the Deccan? 10. All right. So, technically, this could be considered a conjunction because we are within three orbs of itself. Okay. All right. So, we have... There we go. Interesting. All right, in this particular reading, what what I'm sensing when it when it relates to our interpersonal relationships, when it where it relates to our marriages or our significant others, is that the trickster element of Mercury is starting to manifest. We have the Page of Swords combined with Mercury, and again, Mercury's dark side is the trickster, and that combines with the the third decan of Gemini, which is the Lord of Ruin. So, wow, okay. Pretty much what's happening with the element of fire is we are overthinking, we are overanalyzing, and we are basically headed to our own ruin because of it. 
All right. Yeah. So, you know, if we were to look, let's say, let's say in, in biblical studies, you know, what, what, what is Satan's power? Satan's power is the ability to make a person doubt themselves. It's, it's, it's the, um, it's the devil on your shoulder that's constantly giving you the bad advice and you follow that. Well, that's what the Page of Swords is doing here. Again, Page of Swords combined with Mercury combined with Gemini or the Lord of Ruin in particular. And that is essentially clouding our intuition. That's clouding our spirit. And it's having a great effect on our relationships. It's having a great effect on the personal, the interpersonal relationships with the people in our lives is we are thinking too much and we are not communicating what we need to communicate. Again, this is all in the house of Scorpio or it's, it's in the eighth house, which is ruled by Scorpio. So it relates to intimate issues, particularly in our relationships. All right. And the fact that these two are in conjunction means that they are... They're basically acting as one in the same. Where our, our emotional nature towards the significant others in our life is being blocked by over-rationalizing, by overthinking. And wow, yeah, it's 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 a pretty uh it's a pretty messy situation right there. So let's see what's happening in the plane of air or with the element of air. Okay, now as we begin to descend from spirit to the material world, fire, again, is sort of the spirit come down into this world, whereas air is our intellect and communication. If we were to look, if we were to reference, let's say, Yggdrasil in the Tree of Life, the element of air would represent the branches. It would represent the divinity coming down to us and creating our intellectual and communicative endeavors. So what is air being influenced by? Okay. Ha. Oof. Okay, the chariot in reverse. All right, air is being influenced by the chariot in reverse. Now, the chariot, the chariot, the reason why the chariot moves, the reason why the chariot has the ability to go where it wants to is because it's in balance, which is why in this card you see you see the you see the light and the dark it's a card of perfect balance but it's in reverse which means that our shadow aspects and the light aspects of ourselves is not in balance and it's related again to the element of air here you have air influencing fire and that imbalance is also influencing the element of air the chariot, in astrological terms, is also represented by cancer. So we can say that the imbalance is specifically coming from our emotional nature. And again, here's a spirit with the Ace of Cups saying that, well, the energy is not completely manifested yet because of all this imbalance. We want to connect on an, on an emotional level to our significant other, but we cannot because the element of air. We are overthinking. We are over-rationalizing. And again, oh, I'll wait a little bit for the dog to stop barking. Okay, so we're, we have an imbalance here primarily because of air, and it's no surprise that the actual element of air is also out of balance because of its emotional nature. Again, overthinking, over-rationalizing, maybe 
We are communicating in ways which is not productive for us. And so the chariot goes nowhere. It's got broken wheels and it's just stuck there. So what is the advice of the astrology die? Okay. Neptune in Scorpio in the second house. All right, let me let me put this over there. Neptune in Scorpio. And let's re-roll for the Deccan. We have a one. Okay, so the first Deccan of Scorpio. Ooh, all right. Wow. We almost have an opposition here, but we don't quite have it. Um, okay, let me process this for a little bit. Okay, so the first Deccan of Scorpio is ruled by Mars, and that is the Lord of Loss of Pleasure. It's also called the Mourning Card. So in this relationship, we have a dramatic loss. We have a dramatic loss which has basically taken the steam out of our cells, or it's taken the wheels off of our chariot. And that's what the air, or that's what the element of air is being influenced by. And with Neptune's placement in this reading, with it being in Taurus, is that it looks like we've lost a lot of our spiritual beauty. We've lost a lot of our spiritual wealth. And that is why, that's why basically this whole reading is, is out of balance. Yeah. So the advice would be, to reconnect with the spiritual nature, to reconnect with the spiritual nature, to go back to understanding our emotions, to put our lives back into balance. It, it's interesting because you have these two elements in Scorpio and you have also Scorpio popping up right here. There's a lot of Scorpio energy. There is a lot having to relate to death. There is a, a lot... You know, Scorpio could also relate to inheritance um, and, and money matters on, on that type of level. So that's why we're experiencing so much of this is because we are essentially destitute in our material wealth. We are destitute in our spiritual wealth. A lot of times when you have, when you have earth in the readings, especially when, when, it, when it looks like this, the, the reading is not necessarily, or I should say earth can be representing spiritual wealth as well as material wealth. A lot of times they go hand in hand. So when you have a lot of this death and this loss and this manipulation, it's very easy to understand why we would have so much difficulty with our significant others, why we would have so much difficulty in establishing strong bonds with the people in our life that are supposed to be closest to us. Yeah. Okay. And again, like, like, like I said, that, that first Deccan is ruled by Mars. So, and, and it's called the morning card. So all of this, all of this loss has, has, basically derailed us and it's taken the wind out of our cells. Again, the element of air is not communicating as it should because it suffered an emotional loss. Because it, everything that makes air good, we're now seeing the, sh the, the, the shadow side. We're seeing the trickster element of Mercury. We're seeing the third decan of Gemini, which is the Lord of Ruin. But the lesson of the Lord of Ruin is that ultimately we are reborn. We are reborn when we've figured out our, our ailments, our, especially our mental ailments. Okay, moving right along. Wow. Pentacles. So, pentacles represent the element of earth, and in the tree of life, pentacles represent the trunk of Yggdrasil. Pentacles and the trunk of, of Yggdrasil also represents our physical body. So it could represent everything on the material world. Our body, our our wealth, our our physical peace of mind. Okay, what is Pentacles 
being influenced by. Okay, the Three of Pentacles. So, well, I guess that's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. So on the materialistic world, or within the body, we're doing okay. The Three of Pentacles, if I can remember correctly, is, let's see, it is a Lord of Material Works. Okay, now, basically what's happening is, even though we're going through all this intellectual and emotional chaos, on the material world, we are, we are, we are still holding it together enough to keep pressing forward. Okay. The Lord of Material Works, um, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, th this is Rider weight, and it's pretty much, it's pretty much saying, okay, you have started your business endeavors or if you started your, your, your material endeavors, you're starting to gain some recognition for it. So on the material world, we are beginning to see some manifestation, some glimmer of hope that things are going to get better. Um, maybe, maybe you started a, a new workout regimen. Maybe you started something to you know, yoga, walking, something like that. Something is starting to manifest in the material world. Maybe you're starting a new YouTube channel and you're starting to see those things begin to materialize. And again, when the material is, is in balance, it can help to lead and to liberate the rest of these elements. Because... As anyone who's ever really been down on their luck knows, when you're out of balance and you're struggling to pay bills and you're struggling to make ends meet, it only amplifies the rest of this chaos. And yeah, it looks like we have we have some light at the end of the tunnel, at least within the body and the material realm. Now, what is the advice from the astrology die? Okay, Pluto in Sagittarius, in the fifth house. Interesting, all right. So, Pluto, Sagittarius, fifth house. Let's re-roll for the Deccan. It's an eight. All right, middle Deccan. Okay. Now, the middle Deccan of Sagittarius is the Lord of Great Strength. Which, yeah, that's that's what we need. That's what we need to keep it, to keep this, this show on the road and to recollect, to repair the damage done to the chariot, to repair the gossip and slander created by the Page of Swords, and to be able to manifest the emotional connection in our interpersonal relationships to manage to manage the emotional ties to our significant other. So Pluto was saying... Pluto is also about death and transformation too, which is very, very uh, close in close proximity to the Scorpio aspects that, that we've been getting. And it's saying, okay, give me a moment. Okay, it's also influenced by the fifth house, which is entertainment. Okay, so we need to essentially redevelop the ways, transform the ways that we enjoy ourselves. We need to look closely at what gives us pleasure, at what, at what inspires us to keep on going another day. Now, it looks like some of us may have already been doing that because we, we are beginning to see that material um, that, that, that material wealth begin to manifest within our bodies and, and maybe within our bank accounts. But we still need to accelerate this process. We, we still need to, to think about how we are enjoying our lives. Maybe, maybe we've gone through so much with all these other elements 
that working on ourselves and working on our own enjoyment is really the only thing we can do at this time. And again, this is calling for a transformation. When it's influenced by Sagittarius, it also has to deal with the aspects of higher learning, and it has to deal with the aspects of travel. So maybe, again, maybe go on a walk, maybe maybe read some more books or listen to some more podcasts to gain more insight and information and a depth of understanding in waking up every day and looking for new inspiration in our lives. What's also interesting is that, okay, all right, okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Now here on the material plane, we're starting to, to, to see some optimism. But if we notice, we have a square forming with the spirit, and we have a square forming with the element of fire. So earth is squaring spirit and fire right now. And it's it's no coincidence because here we have whoever the page of swords is in our life, whoever this gossip or, or whatever the, the misinformation is, we have this. It doesn't want to see it doesn't want to see us get better. It wants to keep on amplifying its ruin. And that is, again, because the, the element, the, the trickster element of Mercury is coming out. And the biggest problem, once once you start to go down the trickster element of Mercury, that trickster element can convince you that you are going down the right path, intellectually or spiritually, but you're really not. It's really just getting back to the basics. It's really just learning how to take care of yourself on the physical plane to unravel what's happening in the spiritual plane and also with the element of fire. It's not quite squared with, with the element of air. It's pretty close, but it's not quite there yet. But these two are definitely squaring, and it's squared with both of them. So we have a conflict between taking care of the spirit and taking care of the element of fire, which is also the first manifestation of spirit in the physical plane. All right. So something does not want us to improve ourselves, but it needs to happen. And something does not want us to reestablish the emotional connection with our significant others, but it also needs to happen. So I would say... Keep on following the path of the pentacle right now because this is this has been the most positive aspect of this reading so far. Keep on reestablish what gives you joy. Reestablish well what what gives you joy on the physical plane. Reestablish reestablish being mindful of your health and reestablish being mindful trying to balance out those those um, those higher learning pursuits in regards to your health and to your enjoyment. All right, so that's what's happening in Pentacles right now. Last but not least, we have the element of water, and the element of water in the Tree of Life is is represented by the roots, the roots of Yggdrasil. the The water represents our emotions, it represents our intuition, it represents our shadow selves as well. And what is water being influenced by? Very curious. Oh, water also, uh, water also allows us to talk to our ancestors. It's the river of blood which we inherit from our ancestors. Okay. Ha. The Knight of Pentacles. All right. Excellent, excellent. All right. Now we have water being influenced by the Knight of Pentacles. Whatever is working on the material world to take better care of ourselves, <coughs> excuse me, is also working on the emotional level as well. We have started on a new quest. Knights always represent 
It could represent a couple of different things, but I think in this particular reading, it represents the start of our endeavors to better ourselves on the material plane. And that is what is benefiting our emotions right now. The practicality, the routine, the stability in the in this practice of pentacles is also translating to our lower selves. It's translating to creating a sense of emotional well-being. And when we can have that emotional well-being established on our lower levels, we will have the foundation to essentially reestablish and clear up all the gunk in the higher levels, the, the levels of intellect, the level of the spirit, and the level and the element of fire. So what is the astrology die recommending for this? Okay, we have Pluto in Scorpio in the fifth house. All right, more fifth house energy. Okay, let's roll for the Deccan. Six. Oh, we got a conjunction. Okay, another conjunction. Okay, let me set this up real quick. Bam, bam, bam. All right. Well, a lot of transformation. We've got... <laughs> we've got both pentacles and cups or water in conjunction. They are both being influenced by Pluto, which is calling for transformation. And it's all in the house of Leo, which relates to our entertainment. Okay, ah, so we got Pluto and Scorpio in the middle decan. Now what's interesting about, ah, this is a very interesting read. What's interesting about this is the middle decan of Scorpio is called the Lord of Pleasure. All right, so it's basically saying learn to reestablish and have fun again, also on the emotional level. Learn to, to reestablish that pleasure. Learn to enjoy yourself. And it's not just about taking care of your body, but it's also about taking care of your emotional well-being. It's learning to laugh and love again. And even though it's really interesting because we have these energies which square, we have the energy of the spirit and fire, which is essentially squaring the energy of pentacles and, and cups, but it's what we have to do. I would say, yeah, all of this is a mess right now. But work on the foundation, work on the emotional, and work on the material foundations to, to learn how to live life again, to learn, excuse me, to learn how to enjoy yourself again. And so Scorpio is, is also, uh, it also represents the bedroom. You know, maybe, maybe learn how, how to love your partner again in different ways. Transform how you love your partner. And yeah. And that'll help to establish a more healthy emotional connection. All right. Okay, let's see. Is there anything else that we have here? Anything else that I missed? It looks like now we, we've got, we got the squares there. Yeah, so, so the main conflict is mostly between these two. And again, if we keep going down what we're doing with the element of fire, if we keep overanalyzing, overthinking, if we keep doubting ourselves, it's only going to lead to our ruin because the third decan of Gemini is the Lord of Ruin. So we must transform our physical and our emotional nature to avoid this ruin. Now, let, let's say let's say this was ignored. Okay, well, then ultimately the Lord of Ruin, like I said, is 
when you have nothing left to lose, you can rebuild yourself. So even if you do continue to follow down the path of the trickster or to buy into the gossip or to buy into the to the smack talk or whatever it is, it's still going to lead to the same path. But to, let's say, alleviate some of the symptoms and to alleviate some of the anxiety, focus on what you're already doing on the physical and emotional planes. Learn to, again, educate yourself on the body. Educate yourself on on the emotional nature. Those will help to transform both of this, and it'll help to unlock and unbind the rest of this that's happening. So thank you, everyone, for joining me today. I hope... I hope you got some of the wisdom from the tarot and from astrology and from the elements and hope to see you again very soon. Thanks again. I love you all and so long. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. If you resonate with what you are seeing or hearing, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share Obleron's content. It really helps him to spread the word and to grow his channel and pages. Collective readings are posted Mondays on the High Priestess's Circle. Teachings are posted Wednesdays on the Magister's Sanctum, and the music from those episodes are posted Fridays on the Empress's Theater. Posters and merch related to Obleron's teachings are available at obleron.square.site. Music from the episodes is also available at obleron.bandcamp.com. Obleron is spelled O-B-L-Y-R-O-N. Lastly, don't forget to connect with the community on Discord. It's called the Magister's Council, and look for the invite link in the description boxes and profiles below. There are astrology and wellness bots, as well as games and discussion forums available for free. There is also an exclusive members-only section with additional content and live streams for subscribers. Obleron also takes inquiries for services through Discord. In case you missed anything, all the links are available in the description boxes and profiles below. Thank you everyone, and much love to all.